Assassinx1 here. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to set up your Minecraft Feed the Beast server. It's a subject which causes a lot of people very very much problems so I'm going to make a very very simplified video to show you the easy way to set up your server for both home use or to use with an online server provider such as the one I use host horde so we will get right on with it so the first thing we need to do is we need to download our server pack so you would choose which server you want to enter find out what mod pack they are running if it's a feed the beast server which is what we're covering and then download the applicable pack in my case I'm running a direwolf 121 pack for my server so I would want to download uh, the 121 server pack to, to get this up and running and also make sure that when you connect to a server you're connecting with the correct version as if you do not it could well be that you're missing some mods in order to make that version work along with the server you're joining so choose your server download server very easy it will then automatically download your server once we have our server files we can begin to set up our server so we will just move these files to a manageable place like my desktop temporarily what I am going to do now is create a setup folder for my uh, FTP server so I will call that FTP server setup so this will be the folder you run your server from also so you can call it what you like on your computer it does not matter so you then extract the files you just downloaded stop doing that stop doing that there into your new folder Once the files are extracted into this folder, you need to then open the folder and look for the FTP install.bat. Run that file and it will download the server jar files for you and make your server ready to launch next you need to open the eula.txt and you need to change this line which says eula equals false to eula equals true save if you don't do that your server will not run so at this point now you have a basic server uh, ready to set up so what you need to do is you need to run the server to set up the server and this will generate all the server files needed to make your server work as you can see it's loading all the add-ons for the server 
and as you see as file lists are getting longer here as directories are being created files are being created for the server and now the server is loading for the first time and my server is online as you can see there's zero players online but the server is up right I'm just going to now show you that my home server is up and running my IP address what is my IP my IP is there you see there and we're going to use that information to connect to my home server I'm just going to check what the port is 25565 which is the default Minecraft port so we load yay there we go quickest load ever so we click on multiplayer now I already have a connection from my home server checking yep there we go my servers up so we're just going to look at the information 80 61 76 228 port 25565 my home server done so as you see it's the exact information as my internet so you, you see I'm actually connecting up now to the server we just made which is a standard 20 player server so we'll just load into this And there we go, as you see, our own online server. Which anybody who has your connect info and the correct version of Minecraft will be able to connect to. So we just give this a second so everything loads in. There we go, the world has loaded. The online server is now online and available to connect. So if we now go back to the console and we have a look who is online on this server you will see one player and that is me so we're just going to disconnect from the server now list no players online so now we're going to shut down the server again with the stop command And there the server has successfully closed. Press any key, the window goes away. Okay, so our server is set up and running, but it's only running for home use at the moment. If you want to use this with an online server provider such as Hosthood, you are going to need to go through a few extra steps to make your server work if you upload your server as it stands now working for your home computer the console from host Hood, when running will kick out some garbage errors and terminate the running of the server and you will not understand why so you need to follow this next little piece of the guide exactly if you are going to be running on a provider such as host horde so what we need to do to begin this we have our basic server setup up running working tested and connected to 
we make first a new folder and we call that folder jar a jar folder we then need to take the jar files there should be two jar files included with your installation some versions of FTP FTB only have one so be aware that it might not be two files you're copying but it does need to be the jar files so we will cut them we will paste them into the oops let's try that again so we we need to cut these two jar files then we need to paste them into the jar folder there we go they are in there nice we then need to take the libraries folder we paste that inside the jar folder so then your jar folder should look like this or very similar you then need to go into your libraries folder you will see one exe file here you must delete that file it is not needed when uploading to a server provider click back click back again to your root directory of your server you then need to delete all the .bat and .sh files you see in the directory this will leave your server looking like this you will then use an FTP client such as FileZilla to connect up to your server and here you see the list of miles there and here you see the list of files match except for this which is a world file that was generated because our world is playable so if we look in here the jar folder you see we've got two folders for host horde when using a feed the beast server it's recommended that you rename the feed the beast folder uh, the feed when using a feed the beast server it is recommended you rename the feed the beast jar file to custom underscore server dot jar check with your uh, server provider to make sure there's no extra instructions with the setup for renaming of files etc as this can help performance on your server in the case of uh, the host horde when you first connect up to their servers you're presented with a list of pre-made servers or you can delete them all and upload your own in which case you're recommended to label exactly as such so it recognizes it needs to use extra memory parameters to run the Java file so your server will not run into problems okay so here is how my feed the beast setup works on my online server there we go multicraft and here's my server yay so you see that this Java file that the server is looking for is custom server which is custom underscore server dot jar and my server here is up and running normal and there is my connect info for my server s45.hosthorde.com the port is 25985 you see here 
so we are going to connect to my server which has the exact file layout as this this is basically my online server right here you're looking at it the backup so you you see it's identical here with the jar files here I actually forgot to delete that on this one but yes there we go so multiplay you see my home server has disappeared because I've stopped it and there we go we are now loaded onto my online server There we go, everything should have loaded in already. Fluffy Cloud 79 insisted I, in one of my earlier videos, give a little tour of our Minecraft town. So I am briefly going to do a flyover of this now. However, as this isn't an actual video about Minecraft only about making a server I'm not going to go into any detail about any of these buildings we will just finish talking about a couple of things with online servers um, it is possible to run the online server uh, from your home computer as I've just demonstrated my computer is nothing special and the server runs so to those who have heard so many times oh, you you need to rent a server that's not entirely true however the benefits of renting a server really 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 make it a worthwhile consideration to get your server from a company such as Hosthood which gave multiple different payment plans with memory options etc um, one of the things you'll notice about online, uh, about your home server, is when you get a few players on, it will very, very, very quickly start to lag out and have problems. Um, with the online servers, you have a much, much higher bandwidth than you could probably provide from your home computer and your home network. Uh, you have an epic amount of storage space and the speed of the servers really really keeps going uh, yeah it does help to when you're running a, a feed to be server of this size we have um, it really really helps to restart the servers every couple of days or so or you will get lag issues when you've had a few people on especially with worlds doing things like a mistcraft mistcraft is a world destroyer also so back up your towns and basically uh, I think this guide should just about give you everything you need to start your own networking if anybody has any problems with networking you can email me on assassinx1 at live.nl that's a s a s s i n x1 at live.nl and i will do my best to answer any questions or give any assistance to get you started with your own servers Right, I hope this guide was useful to everybody. Till next time.